And then I start, uh, which is quite good news, uh, the Doctor Who on radio, which you probably heard about. Yes, a bit of good a, question. A bit of a rumour about that. It was my idea when I heard that it wasn't going to go on on television. I decided that I'd do it on uh, on radio, and so. We're, the, the Brigadier and I are doing it, the Brig, uh, Nick Courtney, he's going to do it too. He's a very experienced radio performer, as I am. And uh, I really sort of started my successful career on radio. Uh, I had a show called The Navy Line, which ran for over 20 years. It was the longest running radio comedy show in the world, I think. And, uh, and so we're looking forward to that. We're doing that in April. And that's just made onto cassettes in packs, and it'll be sold uh, as a two and a half hour story in three cassettes, and that'll be sold as one package. We were originally going to do it on broadcast, but of course that would be practically stupid to do it on broadcast, because everybody would then record it <laughs> onto their own personal machines, and then we wouldn't make any money out of it. So it's now uh, uh, sold straight onto cassette, and then of course the cassettes will eventually be played by radio stations. Do you have a release date for that at all? Uh, no, not when it's coming out, because enterprises being enterprises, you don't know how long they're going to take to do anything. <laughs> they take five to ten years to make up their mind. So you do have the script at least? Hi, Kim. Hi, BJ. Come and sit down now. We're just, we're just having a casual press conference. These are friends of mine from Columbus, Ohio. So we're going to now open up a magnificent new bookshop specializing in my books. <laughs> <laughs> and others. Um, yes, right, next. Um, other than the things I've mentioned before, I also know you. Uh, well, I've actually seen Wurzel Gummins, who did show in Canada. We're from Canada. Yeah. And it oh, did show there for yeah. quite a while. Yes, actually, it's very interesting. I'm having a lawsuit about that. Oh, really? Because I've never received one brass farthing from Canada for <laughs> okay. my residuals. Pay and uh, <laughs> so we had a, a, a very friendly guy who, who gave us the breakdown on, in fact, how. Uh, how much they'd actually show. Uh, how long, how many series did they show? How many programs? Yeah. Lots. It was on for at least a year, I know that much. Incredible. Every day. You're from Canada as well? Yeah, they went through the New Zealand episodes. They did the New Zealand ones? Yeah. Only those? Oh, and the original. Oh, and the original. All the series. And I haven't got a shilling. I have no idea about that. Incredible. I haven't got a shilling from them. I haven't got a shilling from Australia. Uh, for for Wurzel or from Holland. Of about six or seven countries, they just uh, bury them. <laughs> that, that's it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, where are you from in Canada? Montreal. Montreal. Oh, yeah. Toronto. Yes. Are you all from Toronto? Sure. Oh, well, of course, I've been to Kitchener. Uh, to Were you there? Yeah, I was there. Were you? What, what year was that? 1985. 85? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that enormously. I know, but while I was there, somebody tried to convert me to be a, being an Amish. Amish or, or a Mennonite, I never know what you've got. Mennonites or Amish? Mennonites. 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 Yeah, Mennonites. Uh, but lovely. I really enjoy them. I, I spent a lot of time with, with uh, people and uh, I was fascinated by them, but they did try to convert me. They said, they said I lived in a wicked place. London is a very wicked place, brother. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. How is that charming uh, Oriental guy who uh, who ran the conference? Irwin. Irwin. He works for the government as an auditor now. Is he? That's right. Is he still in Kitchener? No, he's in Toronto as well. Yeah, and his sister? Christine is going to university in London, Ontario. Is she really? Would you, if you can get a message through, give them my love and best wishes? Oh, that's absolutely charming. I really enjoyed myself there. The food is so good. Excellent grub. Yeah, any other questions? Gentlemen, come on, somebody at the back there. Oh, but what I was going to ask you about oh, yeah. is, um, I've, I've also seen you in, I'm a big fan of Carry On movies, and I'm sure you were in, I think, Cleo and Cowboy and... I'm afraid so, yes. 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 What do, you, do you have any good memories or bad memories of those films? Uh, to get through them as quickly as possible. Ah. <laughs> no, they were fun. That would be wrong to say that. They were great fun, but I never wanted to deal them seriously. I only did it as a joke because I knew the producer very well. And he said, just can you do, do a quick cameo? And so the other day, they rang me up and my agent rang me up. It's a rather sad story, actually. He said, I've got great news for you. I've just fixed you in a marvelous movie. And I said, what? He said, uh, uh, this is Columbus. And I thought, my God, it was, this is Gerard Depardieu, who's the hottest film star in the world. Now, after Manon de Source, you know, that his two or three wonderful films in Serrano de Bergerac. And I thought, that's marvelous. How big a role? He said, oh, it's just a cameo, but it's lovely. Now, I'm sending you the script, and you'll get it tomorrow morning. 
So the next morning I was awake at half past five, you know, waiting for the mail to come. And there was a thump as it came through the door, and I opened it up, and there it was, Carry On Columbus. And this was the Carry On movie, which is not the same thing at all. <laughs> and I was absolutely heartbroken, but I read it, and it was quite funny. And I, I rang the, the director and the producer and said, but I, I really didn't, wasn't quite for keen on doing this, not after all these years. And they said, well, for God's sake, do, because everybody else is dead. You're, <laughs> you're, you're it's alive if you think of the cast and the company. I mean, the, the large majority of them were dead. He said, we've got to have some of the old originals. So would you do it? So I, yes, I did. And, uh, and on the, I went on the first day to the makeup room. And there was one of our greatest actresses, very, very hot at the moment, enormously successful, uh, called Maureen Lipman. And Maureen Lipman was there having makeup put on, and I said, hello, love, what are you doing here? She said, the same as you, darling, trying to make a buck. And I couldn't believe it, that she was going to be in the Carry On Columbus. And I said, well, I'm very surprised that you do this. And she said, well, the condition of the British film business, we were naturally by doing it. And we went onto the floor, and there was an archbishop standing there mumbling away with, with his lines. And I said to Maureen, I recognize that fellow, don't you? So she said, yes, and it was T.P. McKenna. Well, you probably wouldn't know who T.P. McKenna is, but he's one of our top dramatic actors. And there he was playing two lines in Carry On Columbus. So I thought, well, that sets well for the rest of the film. Everybody that speaks a line is going to be a name, and so it, it should be, you know, something good to work with. As it transpired and turned out, it was terrible. It was diabolical because you can't get people to do what other people do and originate. You can't get a man to be at the part that Kenneth Williams originates, or with Charlie Hawtrey or any of that team. They, they, they can't do it. And they tried that with Doctor Who without real success, and it wasn't fair on the actor. That was the master, because Roger Delgado was brilliant, and you couldn't you couldn't better him. So when they gave the part to uh, uh, Anthony, Anthony Arnley, Arnley. Uh, Anthony Arnley uh, it, it was a miserable thing to give somebody to do because he had to copy Roger Delgado, which of course nobody can do. He wanted to be himself, so it would have been much better if he'd been able to originate his own interpretation of the role. So I didn't really enjoy it as much as I should do. I enjoyed getting the money, that was good. <laughs> Yes, now, gentlemen, please, I'm sure you're... Can you tell us something about uh, a series you were supposed to have made with Barry Lance that never got off the ground? I can't call the name off the top of my That's head. interesting, yes, that's Star Watch. That's what it was. Yeah, Star Watch. Well, Star Watch were, uh, looked like being terribly good, and it's still on the brink. Everybody is interested in it because it's superbly set out, and it's a very green subject. And uh, it, it was a, a, a fellow called uh, Christopher Leach, who uh, worked originally with um, Thunderbirds, and that, the Anderson outfit, and Chris Leach was, was set this thing up, and it looked frankly good because he had marvellous brochures, and he had, did you see any of the brochures? Did you, you see the layout? Of them? Yeah. No. Well, they were wonderful, and he spent fortunes on them. But of course, he made a terrible error. The whole thing is that you must not run before you learn to walk. And he ran very fast with this, and uh, spent lots of money on things he shouldn't have spent money on. The result was that a producer would say, I don't want to be told who's playing this. I'll do the casting, or my, my, my casting department will do the casting. I don't want to be told this is written for John Berkeley and Pat Trouden and various people that he'd said, and he had photographs of them. So they'd all collapsed, uh, but because also it was extremely expensive. And, uh, but they are now reconsidering it, and it, because it has a very green basis. And of course, with a green basis, Anything is likely to uh, get a, a good audience now, a good reaction. If they, that's if they can afford it. So that's what they're working on now. Uh, that's what, but Barry Letts is writing, strangely enough, the radio show I've just been telling you about. He's going to write the first story, which is uh, now almost completed, I gather, which is wonderful news because a lot of people don't know it, but Barry Letts wrote a lot of the Doctor Who's under the name of Guy Leopold. Uh, but he wasn't allowed to. I mean, time, so he changed his name and called himself Guy Leopold and wrote stories that he was producing. Thank God, because they were the, some of the best stories we did. The Damons, yeah. The Damons was one, yes. yeah. Speaking of the Damons, um, how did you uh, enjoy your uh, whatnot about the Return to Devil's End? Oh, very much. We, had tr we, uh, we, we laughed too much. And you can imagine getting us all back again with the break and John Levine and Richard Franklin. The only thing we was missing was Casey. Katie Manning wasn't there. 
I mean, we wouldn't have got any work done at all if they did. <laughs> and as it was, we 